will start with the launch of a very special book about a very special cricketer. The book is called Pataudi Nawab of Cricket. To launch it, may we invite on stage Sharmila Tagore, Saurav Ganguly, and Suresh Menon. We would also like to ask Saurav to do the honours, launch the book, along with... Hello. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. There's no host. So I've been asked to do the job. I'm pretty used to it. So uh, we'll start with Suresh having a word. Suresh has been a renowned uh, cricket writer for over the years. He's now with Wisdom India. So I'll hand over the mic to him and he'll take it from there. Thank you, Saurav. Uh, many years ago, well, nearly 50 years ago, a 21-year-old 21, a 21 boy, you can't really call him a man, led India. And, and the amazing thing is that all these years later, half a century later, we're still talking about him. And enough hasn't been said about him yet. Uh, Nawab, uh, Patali, the Nawab of Cricket, is a project, is a book that, is a pro uh, that was a project close to my heart and the driving engine behind this was Sharmila Ji, Sharmila Tagore, whose energy and whose enthusiasm suffuses the book. Uh, we will discuss the book as we go along, but first of all we need to have the formal part of the evening which is that the book will be formally released now. So. I hand you over to Sarao and to Charmila Ji to kindly do the honours. Thank you all for being here. It's a pleasure to see such a packed hall. Uh, I will now start the session with, uh, we, we are talking about the book itself and, then the, and the book in the larger context of biographies and autobiographies of cricket in India. But before we get to that, I would like to ask Sharmila Ji to tell us a few words about the book, about the man, the book is written about whom she knew slightly. Um, I don't know, I do talk quite a lot. Like all Bengalis, I'm never short of words. But when it comes to talking about Tiger, I find myself quite tongue-tied. Um, uh, Tiger was writing his uh, biography and it had uh, progressed quite a lot, but uh, then he went away. Uh, so that was only at the transcribed stage, and it needed a lot of work to, to finish it, to take it forward. That would have taken a longer time. And uh, Harper Collins was quite interested in publishing a book, so we thought that why not we collect, we ask all our friends and there were so many, there was such an outpouring of affection. Um, so we thought that it will write to everybody and whoever is interested, because there were so many wonderful 
uh, tribute also in the newspapers and letters and everybody sharing their experience and telling us a little bit about you know Tiger's life in uh, in Winchester and much before I knew him like Vishen uh, continuously boasts that he knew Tiger much longer Vishen Singh Bedi he always says I knew Tiger much before you I know much more about you and even at this last uh, in uh, Delhi or from the stage he said this is for your benefit Rinku so so I have got to know much more about my husband through these letters and tributes. So we thought we'll do a compilation of these essays. And uh, when I wrote to them, there was, I mean, Farooq instantly wrote back. And uh, MJ Akbar instantly wrote back. And, uh, and also today's uh, cricketers who didn't know Tiger that well, like uh, Rahul Dravid, very sweetly found time. I mean, they're very busy. And today, I thank Saurav to be with us because he's also very busy. So, you know, this is uh, how it happened. And I'm really grateful to all the contributors and particularly Suresh, who has also written, has put the book together, edited it, and Harper Collins, who's published it. And I hope all of you like it. I personally like it very much. I wrote the foreword, and I think I was the last one to send my piece. Uh, my daughter Soha and uh, daughter Soha and Saba has written, but they were very prompt and they wrote very early. But uh, I took a long time because I just couldn't uh, find the voice, you know, how to write about somebody uh, you spend so many years with. It was either getting too emotional or too personal or too, um, too detached. So I've tried, so I don't know whether I've succeeded or not. You'll, you'll be the best judge of that. Um, but at least it's done and it was sent and it's in the book. So I don't want to take up more of your time. I, I'm sure you want to hear everybody else. Thank you for being with us. And this is a very special city. This is where I met Tiger first. And of course, as you know, I'm a Bengali. And, uh, and Bengal, Kolkata is mad about cricket. And my parents were mad about cricket. I was mad about cricket and cricketers. So that was uh, the passion that we shared. So it's a wonderful emotion for me to be here and to share this moment with all of you. Thank you. Uh, before, before I come to Saurav and before we get into the discussion proper, I think I must place on record the fact that I was actually born in Calcutta. So, 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 so we're all Bengalis in a sense. Uh, my, yes, I, I can see the quizzical look on somebody's face. My father used to work here. That, that's the reason. The Bengalis are quite inclusive, so you can be <laughs> one of us. <laughs> that's true, that's true. I always feel warm, warm and very comfortable in Calcutta. Uh, part of the reason that Tiger is so important to Indian cricket and uh, I'm trying to, uh, I, I, I will, it's wonderful that Saurav is here, for example, because there is a, there is a very definite thread that follows, uh, you know, historically, uh, Tiger's contribution to Indian cricket, which, apart from uh, elevating the standards of fielding and elevating the standards of batsmanship, and of course, bringing, putting together the finest spin attack of their time, with the, with the four great spinners, uh, Tiger's most important contribution to Indian cricket in a psychological sense is that he brought to Indian cricket, he developed what I, what I have called in the book the self-respect movement. Because still then Indian cricketers were diffident, they were very sort of uh, unsure of themselves and it was Tiger who, who, who brought, br brought the sense of pride of playing for the country, uh, pride in individual performances and pride in the fact that one could be as good as a cricketer from Australia, England or anywhere else. And this self-respect movement, the, the physical aspects of the self-respect movement meant that it was for under, under Tiger for the first time, Vishen, Vishen has made a uh, point of this in the book, that Indians played as Indians and not as uh, uh, men from Karnataka or Tamil Nadu or Delhi or Bombay or Calcutta. They played as Indians, and this is very important to Indian cricket. And I have said elsewhere that 
Saurav led the second self-respect movement in India, uh, where, where Tiger had united the, the big city India. What Saurav did was he united the small cities and it was under, under Saurav that uh, the outposts of cricket as it were, the, the, the uh, uh, Jalandas and the Palariwatams and the uh, Amethis all, all came together because that required a different kind of that required a different kind of mindset. So I'm going to start by asking Saurav this, and we will come back to the main topic, which is of course uh, why cricketers don't uh, write biographies. I, I just want to get this from Saurav because there's a direct link here between Tiger and Saurav. Uh, is that was that a conscious kind of a, a decision? Was it something you consciously worked at, or because you saw there was so much talent, you 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 backed it to the hilt? Uh, you're talking about when I became captain. Oh. You know, to be honest, Suresh, uh, when I first got the captaincy, I didn't know what to do. Because I remember the first day when I, when I did a, a team meeting the night before a game against South Africa in Kochi, and it was in, it was in Kochi, and, and I walked into a team meeting. I had prepared for three hours before that, that I'm going to have to speak in a meeting for the first time. Before that, you were a player where you would listen for most of the time. And you had to speak in front of a team which had Sachin Tendulkar, Azharuddin, Anil Kumle, uh, Jawagal Srinath, uh, who have actually played under. So I had to get through that bit in my first team meeting before I could actually make a statement that we are here to win. Uh, but over the years, I realized certain things were important for Indian cricket to get better. You know, when I first came into the team in 92, it's, it's a long, long time from now, uh, although I'm not that old. Uh, I came in 92, so, and uh, I realized that we were, we were, we had very good individuals. You know, I, I went on the tour of 1992 for four months in, uh, in Australia, and I just want to tell Madam that I just played one game in four months. So I was actually touring Australia and seeing all the beautiful places without playing a game. And uh, I realized that in a team which had uh, such great individual players. In turn, you talk about Shastri, you talk about Bengsaka, Tendulkar, Manjareka, Kapil Dev, Manoj Prabhaka, Anil Kumle, and then at the end of the series, you saw the scoreboard 5 nil, And you sit down and think, how is this possible? Now, when you have so much talent, so much ability, why is it that we don't perform, uh, transfer into performance? So when I became captain, my first goal was to make sure that, uh, you know, I recognize match-winning performances. It may not be a hundred, it may not be a five wickets, but it could be a wicket at the right time, it could be a, a 20 ball, 30 coming in at number seven, uh, because that's very important in a team to bring the culture of, of, of winning. That what, what's more important is winning games rather than having big scores at the end of the day. And uh, also one thing I realized that, uh, you know, when I first came in 1996, uh, I was under immense pressure. I knew that if I hadn't got runs in two test matches or one test match, uh, I may, may not have played again. Luckily, God was kind. Probably I was destined to play for India. Uh, I got through that first hurdle as a player when I got 100 on debut at Lords. But then I made sure that if ever, any day I become the captain of this team or I get a leadership role in this squad, uh, I'll have to take this pressure off players. Uh, my theory was simple that I will identify the right talent uh, it may take a few months more rather than just picking someone on the basis of one performance. But once I pick that talent, he's got to get an opportunity for 10 test matches. And the reason for that was I never wanted him to walk out to bat worrying about his place. All he wanted to think about was the cricket ball which was coming from the other end. He did not have to think that if I would, lo if I would get out, which everybody can because it's just a one ball game. So. Uh, he had to go into that mindset of not worrying what the captain's thinking, what the selectors think about him, and what happens if he fails. The biggest problem in anybody's life, whether it's a sportsman or the field from where madams come in, or for all of us, we all go through uh, our tough times, our examination times, or the crunch moments in our life where we have to deliver. Uh, I never wanted a player to feel that what happens if I fail. I think that's the biggest drawback in anybody's development. And over the years, I've seen a lot of good cricketers not being able to showcase their talent and thereby India not becoming a better team because of that fear. So we wanted to get together under one roof, get the belief 
that you, we will support you because you're good, but at the same time, we need your performance. That sounds so logical and so sensible, and, uh, but somehow it took, it took so many years to, to arrive at that. Uh, Saurav has spoken about the culture within the team. Uh, Sharmilaji, I want to ask you about the culture outside. What, the, the, the specific question I'm asking is that when in, I, I was in Delhi yesterday and somebody heard that I was coming here to speak uh, on this occasion. They said, but isn't it true that the, sixters, the, the cricketers of the 60s were far more glamorous than, than today's players? And that sort of set me thinking. Uh, do, you, do you think that's, that's uh, fair to say that the, that the Tigers and the Jays and the Farooks and Vishans and Venkats were all uh, a different breed? Yes, my dearest friend is sitting right in front. Uh, we met uh, a few months before we got married in 1968 and she will bear witness that I don't think I was allowed to talk about cricket. I think it was in my marriage contract because uh, I think I've said this before, uh, when I met Tiger, I was in London and I was showing off how much I know about cricket to no less a person than Peter May. And I was talking about this leg cut and then I got this massive kick under the table <laughs> and then later I said, and, don't you dare talk about cricket when you don't know. I was told it was late cut, not leg cut. So, yeah. So well, that's madam, how. You must, <laughs> you must be a kind woman because uh, being a film star yourself, and I must say before, before we go further that you come from a very well-known family with Tiger, Saif, Karina, the two daughters and yourself, and you're still by far the most good-looking of all of them. Still. <laughs> so by... Going from that, uh, you must be a very kind woman to tolerate a kick from the husband and still go on in a meeting. He wasn't my husband then, so that was, I was even more tolerant. And Karina and Saif hadn't arrived on the scene. But I know, but a lot of people ask me that yours has been a celebrity marriage. And who was, you know, more famous? I mean, how did you deal with the, who was getting more attention and that? So, you know, at home also we sometimes talked about it. And Tiger said, of course, there is no dispute about this at all because uh, there are many, many film actors. I mean, you might be famous, but there are other famous actors too. But uh, there is only one cricket captain. And in season, there is no, I mean, and then when I see the roles that these people receive, <laughs> so there was no, no, never any dispute. But uh, what to answer your question, yes, I think so. I mean, from our age group, obviously, I'm sure today's young kids obviously think Virat Kohli is the ultimate, uh, you know. But uh, I was a Jaisima fan. And uh, yes, Farooq. And what, what was, I think, uh, sort of correct me, uh, people had more time to bond with each other. The team was not just meeting uh, during practice or they were meeting all the time. I mean, they were buddies, they spent time together, uh, they played snooker and, you know, other things and they knew each other. Uh, like Buggy was a friend and socially we were, uh, and I remember going to England because those days, girlfriends, the most definitely not, and wives were also not allowed on tours and, uh, and tours took forever. And there was no cell phones, so I had to, if I wanted to talk to Tiger, I used to, and those days I didn't have a telephone, so I used to go to Rad Singh Ji's house in the middle of the night at one o'clock in the morning and book a call, lightning call, which went via London. And Tiger had to come out of his uh, room and take it from the lobby. And often we left messages uh, with the operator. So you can imagine, like Saurav was just telling me earlier, that you have to make a conscious decision that how much time you're going to give to cricket when you're married, when you have young children. And how do you just be on the tour all the time and not see your kids grow up, which is so important. And those days, uh, you can imagine without all these facilities how difficult it was. So I used to hire a car and follow the bus around and stay somewhere else and all these uh, hide and seek used to go on. And, um, Farooq had his son there and we had a party and I remember teaching Hanuman Singh how to dance, one, two, three, one, two, three. So we had so much fun. So looking back, I find those were, uh, you know, the, the stress these people, I mean, of course there was stress also then. The selectors were uh, gods and uh, uh, Tiger Patodi on the mat was, 
you know, very uh, often mentioned in the papers. So yeah, that, but those were different. They were getting what, 10 rupees for Ranji Trophy and 20 rupees for Dulip Trophy. And, and they had to pay for their laundry and their telephone calls and those two, they used to wear white, so the laundry bill was quite substantive. So uh, you can't imagine how, but I think uh, we had so much fun, so much fun indeed. Is it true as, as Jim Parks, uh, the wicketkeeper of uh, Sussex has written somewhere, that on the morning of a match in England, uh, Jim Parks was captaining Sussex that year and, and he got a message from Tiger saying, Sorry, I'm in Paris, can't make it today. <laughs> no, and, no, and that's not true at all. He, he had off, obviously, no, to that's not you. true at all. He had broken fingers. That, that's uh, completely true. I mean, he couldn't have been. But he did come to Paris for a, for a couple of weeks when I was shooting an evening in Paris. And uh, we had a lot of fun. That's in the book. <laughs> that's in the book, yes. The, the amazing thing is, which you were saying earlier that uh, cricketers then seem to have more fun. Uh, I don't know if Saro agrees with that, but is there, is, there, is there a reason that having a lot of fun or not having a lot of fun, ultimately what happens is no, no serious autobiographies get written. Why do cricketers not write books about uh, the period in which they played? Why are you not writing a book, for example, to, to bring it closer home? I think a lot of a lot of cricketers do write autobiographies. I think it's just the current ones who've just finished in a couple of years' time or just finished, they still take a little bit of time to write it because you're still in the hangover of your entire playing career. You've just finished, you've got to do other things uh, and play IPL. So there are a lot of, a lot of things to do for a cricketer. Uh, but I think uh, at some stages you write. Uh, Steve Waugh wrote a fantastic biography. Um, you know, you saw Freddie Flintoff, you saw Mark Taylor. No, I mean, I mean Indian cricketers, sorry, more specifically. More specifically, I think uh, we normally tend to avoid controversy. And uh, it's no point, uh, and you asked me the question that, uh, why haven't you written an, a biography and I finished three years now playing for India. Uh, it's just that uh, I felt uh, it's no point in writing if I can't write everything. And sometimes you're forced not to write everything because I don't want a front page photograph like it was this morning on Sharman Rusti in Times of India, <laughs> that he's not in, allowed to enter the book festival. And uh, so I, I, I normally tend to keep away from it. Uh, but maybe at some stage I will do when I get a bit more time because, uh, because cricket has changed a lot over the years and cricketers have changed a lot over the years. Uh, I have had the pleasure and honor of uh, meeting a Padawdi sir once or twice in his career because in my career because he was a he was a very reserved person and uh, we used to be on the road all the time so from that point of view uh, maybe at some stage uh, the autobiography will come uh, but I don't know when because as I said we give a lot of opportunities on TV you get the IPL going other forms of cricket you're still playing maybe slowly once you get completely away from it uh, you start writing about it but I always feel that a biography has to be a true reflection of everything because uh, the world needs to know what actually goes behind the scenes. Because you, you look at a Tendulkar or a Pataudi or a Gavaska or a Dravid, uh, you see the you see the uh, the outside part of it and you know, the good things. But that's only 25, 30 percent of the story. Uh, maybe if Pataudi was a bit different because you didn't have the op we didn't have the opportunity to go to Paris and meet Sharmila Tagore. So for him it was probably a bit different. Uh, but for us, uh, you know, you actually see the 25% bit in the rest, 75% is completely different. You know, you have your tough times on the field, the selectors are after you back, they're still tough as they used to be in him, Mr. Padawdi's days. And, uh, and, and, and then the media, which has increased uh, 100 times more than when the, great, when the great man played. You just come for a book launch and you keep turning left, middle and right. So imagine when you're caught in Paris uh, with another woman. So. So you've got to be careful, uh, but jokes apart, uh, uh, maybe someday and hopefully you get to know the right things. And, and you know, it's great to see a book on, on, on the legend. Uh, and it's not a biography, it's about what your teammates think about you, which is so, so important because, you know, you, you may be criticized. Somebody might say you're the best in the world. Somebody might say you couldn't play the short ball, you couldn't play fast bowling. But it's what those people who write about you matter. And, and when the great Bishan Singh Bedi has spoken good about someone, he must be good.
Yes, I, I agree with you thoroughly on the on the Bishan comment because I've done a biography of Bishan and uh, I worked very closely with him. You know, you know, with Bishan, I have become very good friends with him now. And when I was captain of I India, know, I know. Jesus, <laughs> he used to take on with me. And 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 you know, I re I remember in a Nagpur Test match, I came, I came back home to the hotel and we had just lost to Australia. And I opened the TV and there was a famous program going on. And I hope there are no star news people here. Uh, it was called Match Ka Mujrim. And every day I would open the TV. For the first five minutes, it, on it only used to be Saurav Ganguly's face. So I used to shut it. I said, listen, there's Saurav Ganguly's face and there's Bishan Singh Bedi sitting next to it. So it could be danger. But since I finished playing, he's been one of my best friends and I met him the other day at a function. It was great to see him. <laughs> he's, a, he's a wonderful man and uh, I, I think that, that, that applies to a whole lot of people. I remember when, when we were putting uh, Wisdom India together, you, you told me that in my playing days, uh, you, meaning myself, uh, used to criticize me a lot, but now we are on the same team, but which we are. <laughs> Bengal. The entire Bengal was behind uh, Sorry Ganguly. That can be <laughs> I remember my, my mother, aged 85, again, uh, sitting in Sunita's uh, uh, veranda. Uh, somebody, Rakhi or somebody said something about, you know, whether he deserves it or it's about time or something. She was 85 and she went red in the face. She said, ever since Shruti Banerjee's died, <laughs> there has been discrimination. And we thought, you know, we said, yes, yes, whatever you say. And then another time with Shomitra, who's very rational, very... I said uh, something again, somebody said, but after all, he's an icon, you know? So I didn't hear a single Bengali who kind of supported this. So Bengal was... No, so I, I, you can't say anything about Bengalis. No, absolutely. And, and, and I think uh, uh, a serious revisionism of the Saura Ganguly phase is going on. In fact, I'm doing a book myself on, on, on the Saurav era and, and uh, uh, how important it was to Indian cricket. Because you need a certain amount, a certain distance uh, before you can do that kind of thing. Uh, but the other aspect that uh, Saurav brought up earlier is that you should not write a, uh, an autobiography, even more than a, a biography, unless you speak the truth. And I think that's, and I think that's very important because uh, you should write the kind of book that only you can write. If Saurav writes a book, it should not be a book that I can write or a, 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 a journalist can write. It has to be a book that only Saura can write because only he has access to that kind of information and that kind of sort of psychological bent to write a book. And I think that's what that's, is missing in the... That's, that's, uh, that's what Soha says, no? yes. when uh, she asked Tiger that why haven't you written a book yet? And that's what he always said. He says, I will not lie. And... Uh, so, you know, writing a book, if I cannot speak the truth, that's exactly what Saurav said, yeah. what is the point in writing? Exactly, exactly. And, and, and I think you owe to the readers to speak the truth. And, and I think players of that era, of Tiger's era, the, the names that we just mentioned, I think each of them deserves a separate, uh, well-thought-out biography. Even if they don't write their own autobiographies, I think they, each of them deserves, because I think they were, they were giants. And, and there will be there will be biographies that don't talk just about their cricket, which is yes, which is exactly. One it is archival. It talks about it shows about the development of the, the history of cricket, which is so important to everybody. Because uh, somehow we don't in India we don't really value history so much. Absolutely. And value you know this. So this archival need is so everybody should write a book, and, you know, from everybody's perspective. I mean, what, what, one of the joys of writing the vision book earlier that I did was that. Vishen, alone among a lot of Indians I knew, is one man who kept every letter he wrote, every reply to every letter. He's a remarkably organized man that way, which might not come across when you, when you, when you watch him on television. for legal purposes, I think. <laughs> yes, that's very true. true. <laughs> yes, uh, and Mutaya Murlidharan hasn't actually sued him. That is just a media story. <laughs> but that's true. The fact is that uh, you need to speak the truth. And you need to uh, put things in perspective. Uh, one, of the, one of the things I like about this uh, book, uh, which I enjoyed doing so much, is that uh, for, it's, it's, it's a range of essays. We've got about 18 or 20 essays. And there's hardly any overlap. So each person is looking at a particular facet of Tiger 
which which he was familiar with ted dexter or mike brearley or ian chapel or yourself soha and and as i've mentioned before i think charmila ji is forward alone is worth the uh, price you pay for the book it's 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 marvelously written and 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 a wonderful perspective for somebody who actually lived with the man for so many years because the fact is and i don't know if charmila ji will agree with this the fact is that uh, tiger is a bit elusive it's 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 very difficult for an outside person to really understand tiger because very few have that kind of uh, largeness to understand him so when when a member of the family uh, like soha has done or sabha you know when when they when they sort of tell us a revealing anecdote or or, or a revealing sort of a, a passing comment on on their father or husband uh, it it's something that the rest of us are not privy to and i think that's that's really the strength of the book i mean apart from the technical the cricketing there's also intensely personal aspects of e- each of these essays i think personally can be sort of expanded into a whole book there's a wonderful piece by nasiruddin shah for example which uh, uh, which is a charming piece about uh, how he sort of used to follow tiger and and it's incredible to realize that that this great actor was just like the rest of us keeping clippings keeping score cards you know uh, running for autographs and it's 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 an incredibly i, I was just talking to uh, said mirza earlier uh, in the evening and he was he was telling me that uh, when when they were making movies together he had to actually tell uh, nasiruddin shah stop playing cricket you have come here to make a movie not to play cricket and i found that fascinating and 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 that's that's you know that's a kind of uh, perspective we we get in the book uh, but but to come to another aspect that i've been meaning to ask you uh, for a while sharmila ji uh, would would a tiger potody uh, be comfortable in today's world in, in today's cricketing world uh, i mean he obviously wanted to play cricket cricket playing cricket was much more um, fun for him than watching cricket or you know and administration he wanted to stay miles away from it because when he started playing in delhi you know he was not quite happy so he moved to hyderabad and he didn't want to get involved in the administrative side of it and uh, for a long while uh, both of us said you know t20 is not what you know this is not cricket and uh, but i remember when it started we all were glued because what came out again i don't know thing i should be allowed to speak wherever he is but uh, i think the fielding aspect of it you know that how it it was such a match winner so i think that aspect in any case it was uh, but it was a different kind of cricket it was not the test matches and it was not what you know would really ultimately make a cricketer or a bowler of that kind of standard um, because you only bowl that many overs and so yeah but it still was interesting but then there was talk about reducing it to 15 so you know so then where is the game so maybe sort of should is talk about that you know the well i hope it doesn't get reduced to 15 uh, because 20 is short enough and uh, and you know as a fielder you know everyone talks about 2020 cricket how fast is it and ma'am your husband was an outstanding fielder uh, and uh, i actually i played ipl for the last 5 years and i actually decided one day that, listen i'm going to stand at third man or deep point and count how many deliveries came to me in a t20 game and i can tell you only eight balls came to me at the fielding position in t20 games and when you stand at test cricket or one day cricket it's probably three times four times so a lot of people have this wrong conception about t20 cricket that it's fast it requires uh, great reflexes it requires young players but actually in a game seven to eight deliveries come to a player in a t20 match so you know it might sound funny but that's actually the truth so for me and i'm sure it's for her, it's for her and our family who grown up uh, watching cricket test cricket is the ultimate cricket because that's where you test the real quality of a player could you could you soon very soon get into a situation where you have very specific players where you have a <coughs> sorry t20 specialist i mean if you, if you read the new uh, recent western india almanac there's a story of a boy who started out with the normal ambitions of wanting to play for ranji trophy and test cricket etc the, the the normal route that you've taken for example but then he decides he decides at some point to to move out of that and and start playing only 2020 cricket 
because he doesn't see himself being a long-term, long-term sort of prospect. So he thinks it's much better for him to play T20 cricket. Is that is that the kind of thing that's going to happen soon? I don't think so because he will not last them. Uh, T20 cricket is fine. Uh, it's a different form of cricket, but at the end of the day, uh, when you finish your playing career or when you go to uh, cricket lectures or you see cricket archives, uh, you'll see a photograph of Pataudi, Tendulkar, Bradman, Kavaska, Travit, uh, who actually mastered uh, Test cricket, or Ted Dexter, who was a very dear friend of, of, the, of the great man. So uh, ultimately, you'll be remembered for what you do in Test cricket. Uh, T20 cricket is fun. It brings people to the ground. You see Shahrukh Khan dancing on the stands. You see Preeti jumping up and down. But at Test cricket, when you see a, a Bretley or an Ambrose going past your nose for six hours in a day, it's a different ball game. So, so Test cricket will always be the best form of cricket. T20 cricket will bring you the money. And if, and if a player has to survive in T20 cricket, he has to be a good Test cricketer. You look at all the big, big boys in T20 cricket who get big money or whatever you say. It's the Callis, it's the Tendulkars, it's the Petersons or the Dhonis who performed in Test cricket. So to survive in T20 cricket, you have to make a name in the longer format of the game. Does it also mean that it's easier to adapt from the higher level to the, obviously from the higher level to the lower level, if one might say that? It's always the case. It's always the case. It's easier to adapt from the higher level to the lower level. T20 cricket is fun, but if you actually look in the last five years, which successful T20 cricketer has gone on to be successful in test cricket? It's actually been the other way around. All the great test players come and do well in T20 cricket. So. Uh, that shows that it's it's the other way around. And I asked Rahul Dravid the other day, uh, I heard you started to train again to play IPL. And I asked Dravid what he was doing at the age of 40, trying to hit sixes every, every uh, delivery when he was actually a master in test cricket. So that's what T20 cricket is. It, it, it uh, gives fun, it gives enjoyment. Uh, you can get your children to the ground. My, my daughter never watched me playing test matches. But every game for Kolkata Knight Riders and Pune Warriors, she would be there. And then at the end of the game, she would come and tell me what right we did and what we could do better in the next game. That, that's the other wonderful thing, isn't it? <laughs> it's made cricket popular to so many people. That's true, that's true. Because I, I, I think Tiger, for example, would have been a magnificent one-day cricketer. I mean, limited overs cricketer. It's just that, you know, it was just a little after his time that the boom, uh, boom took place. Was, is, there something, is there something about uh, Tiger's overall ability? I mean, he was, he was a magnificent squash rackets player. He was a magnificent tennis. He, he, was, he was a natural. He was a natural ball player. And the incredible thing, of course, is that, as some of you younger people in the audience may or may not know, he was playing test cricket within six months of losing his eye in, a, in, a, in an accident. And yeah, that's, and, that's and incredible. Can I interrupt you, sir? Yes, sir. I just want to ask you one question, ma'am. Because I would have asked you about this. Uh, I'm, I'm sure all the people know here that he played test cricket with one eye. And he still went on to get seven test hundreds in an era when there was no helmet. Uh, and there were fast bowlers all around the world, the likes of Kilchrist, Hall, McKenzie's. So, and, and you spent your entire life with him and you've been a f uh, follower of the game. And, and looking by the, your interest, after the, even after when he's not with us anymore, uh, did you ever ask him how it felt playing with one eye without a helmet against the best fast bowlers in the world? Well, um, we've written it about that in the book. Somehow he didn't like talking about his uh, accident. And uh, if we tried to talk about it, it would seriously annoy him. Because uh, he, obviously it meant so much to him because when he, um, he was going to play the varsity match the next day, and he was about to break his father's uh, uh, record in the varsity because he was holding the... And uh, this accident happened and the first thing he said, because he didn't know that uh, how serious this was, because a splinter went into his eye. And uh, so anyway, so the... Um, so, but it obviously affected him so much because his average was over 60 at that time. And it came down to 30. And uh, he made a determined effort. And while he had uh, contact lenses in one eye, he was seeing double. And he kind of used to choose the inner, and he used to pick the ball from the, the movement of the, the bowlers, you know, the arm. And if uh, it was a new bowler, then it would fix him a little bit because he didn't know. So it was very difficult. So he used to pull the uh, cap over his right eye. And so 
like pouring water in a glass without the vision of two eyes or lighting a cigarette or coming down steps. You cannot, or night driving, you cannot really judge the distance. And if something is coming at you as fast as, uh, so it is very tricky to hit a ball with that split second. I don't know, I think his reflexes were that, uh, and he was so quick and uh, obviously very gifted. So I think he managed, but what he couldn't play, he played all games that he did play before, but he couldn't play racket. That he had to give up because that was just too fast, because it was very close and it came very fast, and a smaller ball. Um, but no, we couldn't ask him. He would really, A, he didn't talk too much, as all of you know, and even with us. It's not that he was very talkative with us, but if we asked about his father's death, like, you know, what was it like to lose a father on your birthday at the age of 11, or, uh, you know, uh, what would have happened if you hadn't lost an eye, uh, we couldn't get past that barrier at all. I'll, I'll, I'll just give you a couple of examples, Saro, since you raised the question. There's a lovely anecdote uh, that uh, Mike Braley mentions in, 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 in the book, where Tiger went to meet Sabah Karim after Sabah had the eye injury. And uh, Sava asked him a question. He said, uh, uh, Tiger Sab, when did you come to terms with your injury? And there's a very poignant line there. Uh, Tiger says, and it's one of those few times that, you know, so it's almost unexpected coming from Tiger. And Tiger tells him, Sava, I never came to terms with it. Because you know, he was so talking to another fellow cricketer who understood uh, and you know, in the same, similar, like Colin Milburn also, he couldn't come back to cricket, could he? No, I, I, I think it's, I think that elusive quality of Tiger is, is something that, that has been uh, very important to him, to his, to his whole sort of uh, persona. Because I, I, I remember asking him uh, many years ago, I said, uh, uh, I, I once had the idea of doing a management book based on Tiger because Tiger was, uh, when I started out my career, he was very helpful to me. He was always very encouraging. And I, when I took over as the sports editor in the Indian Express in Delhi many years ago, the first person I went to meet was Tiger at one Duplay Road, the famous uh, address. And I asked Tiger, I said, uh, when, when you took over as captain, you were the youngest among the 11 players. So how did you deal with that? Because I, I was very young and a whole lot of, most, most people in my department were older than me. And, and he gave me a, a, a piece of advice which I think should be in, the, in all the management books. He said, Suresh, please look after the youngsters. And this is exactly what you have done, which ties in neatly with what we were talking earlier. He said, Suresh, please look after the youngsters because the older people will always resent you no matter what. And I think that's, that's wonderful management advice in terms of man management. So, what, so he was not only this great cricketer, a lot of uh, which is captured in the book, but he was also a fine... Uh, sort of a natural manager of people, a natural uh, bring, uh, sort of people, a person who brought people together. And I think that's, that's the uh, important aspect of the book that uh, one needs to mention. Uh, I, just just one, one final thought from uh, Sharmila ji, because uh, uh, we sort of just, just vaguely touched upon it earlier, is that uh, did Tiger ever express any regrets about uh, the time he came back into the Indian team in 74-75, in by which time, uh, you know, he, physically he was, he was just not there? Did he ever, I mean, this is something that I've, I've always wanted to know. Well, I'll repeat what I said, because anything that was that deep or that uh, in, in 70 when he lost his captaincy, but uh, Saif came on the scene on the same year. So I think that took away a lot of his uh, uh, hurt. Um, and he, I know it sounds odd, but he, I think it's common knowledge that he did build a team. And, uh, but he wasn't there to... No, it, it was his team that yeah, went on and then yeah, the, when the matches were being won, he wasn't there to... Um, but I think he didn't dwell on these things at all, and he just moved on with his life. And to answer your question, I would say, no, I don't think he had any regrets. He, he lost a lot of things very early in life. Like I said, he lost his father at the age of 11. He lost his eye at the age of 20. So I think he was used to losses. 
and uh, he had this uh, this uh, grace under fire or courage under fire quality and uh, i think that uh, that took care of uh, him you know being there and uh, dealing with life so he didn't dwell on the misfortunes of life thank you uh, sir would you like to round up the session no i uh... i hope you enjoyed it and uh, thanks for, thanks to all of you for turning up uh, in this event and making it a successful one uh, uh you know uh, we we as young players uh, when we came in to play for india we heard a lot about this great man and and it's my honor here this afternoon or this evening rather to to be a part of his of this wonderful book uh, i sincerely thank sharmila ji because you know she's taking the time out even even when he's not with us anymore uh, to to take this book out on him and continue his legacy which is so so good ma'am and and i really admire you for that uh, and what has even touched me more is that the forward is written by you you know normally with cricket books you ask another great player to do it but uh, you've done it yourself uh, so uh, the respect for you and the family goes even a lot higher with what i've seen today and i hope you stay happy forever and uh, and be good as you have been all your life thank you but i think it comes from really wanting to keep the link alive you know not wanting to lose that link i just been told uh, i i i just been told that we have time to take a couple of questions so if there's yes gentlemen the glasses yeah sure Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Shantanu Choudhury, and I'm from Asian Age Newspaper. I have actually two questions: one for Sharmila ji and for you, Dada. To Sharmila ji, I want to ask, uh, taking reference from a recent commercial that Saif Ali Khan uh, actually, you know, chose to be, uh, you know. So I just want to ask you that how different, uh, how you, different you, it was. Uh, you need to, raise, to uh, you yeah. need to ask her the question once more. She didn't get it. okay taking reference from the recent television uh, commercial actually which shows that uh, saif ali khan chose uh, entertainment world rather than uh, the cricket so i just want to ask you how difficult it was to raise your children where those of two industries were open to them um and my second question to dada i just ask you before she stands my phone microphone uh, i just want to ask you uh, i just want to ask you that uh, we have heard that you used to know put uh, motivational quotes in your kids so i just want to ask you in your crisis time on as your captain did you read any biographies or any cricket book related book that's all i want to ask i don't you book first okay she wants to avoid the question so you <laughs> must answer ask her once i finish so uh, i did at times yes see it's it's a, it's your mindset at that particular time there's no hard and fast rule to life uh and i've never been a big reader in my cricket career i've watched a lot of people i've gone and spoken to a lot of people i've spoken to mr patowdi when when i just became captain when i met him in delhi at a function at the taj so i have spoken to various people but i've never been a big reader so i don't think it will be right for me to say i've read a lot of biographies but i just reacted to situations and tried to get the best out of it um when you know when uh, we might be we might have a public space we have a public life but at home we are like anybody else you know we in our private lives children are children and we allow them to grow at their own pace and the question of what they're going to become when they grow up doesn't come that early so saif was allowed to grow up the way he wanted and he and i know when used to go, when i used to take them out take him out a uh, lot of people would pinch his cheeks and because he was nice roly poly baby and they would say what do you want to be when you grow up do you want to be a cricketer or do you want to be an actor and he would say i want to be a hockey player because he used to get so annoyed with these questions so i guess uh, you know he i think he did a commercial with us and after that the phone started uh, ringing and uh, so the events overtook us and he became an actor <laughs> see the problem is i don't think he had the talent to be a cricketer either <laughs> and also with cricket the problem is the phones don't ring ma'am you have to find out <laughs> so that's the difference hello 
I'm Puriki Padri. This question is for ma'am. Uh, I read about um, Tiger's sense of humor. Apparently, he was playing a test match in Kolkata and he convinced one of his um, teammates that Victoria Memorial belonged to his family. Is that true? I'm afraid so, yes. But, uh, you know, the other person also believed the story. <laughs> and I'll tell you who the other person was. This is investigative journalism. The other person was Farooq Engineer. Could you just pass on the mic, please? <coughs> this is Aritra Basu from Satya Sandan. I would like to ask Dada, you have one year left of your uh, contact with Pune Warrior. What are you going to do now? So you're asking me, I've got one year contract left with Pune Warriors. Yes, what yes. I am going to do now? I've got no contract with Pune Warriors anymore. You have three years contract. I left it last year. No, you, have, you had three years. So I decided to honor two years and leave the final year. So you will not complain next year? You will find out shortly. <laughs> Hello. I am Nimalo. Thank you for the nice session. Dada, can you please become the brand and ambassador for sports of Bengal? Is a request or not? You have to make a request to Didi, not me. <laughs> I am from Sanskrit College. I want to ask Gada a question. Uh, in Jaipur Literary Fest, uh, he was uh, told that uh, John Wright uh, brought uh, many books for uh, many for the team, and uh, Anil Gumble and uh, Rahul Dravid used to read th those books, and uh, you uh, used to pretend uh, that you read those books. So, what is your feelings uh, about that? I'll catch him for that when I see him next time <laughs> for not telling the right things. Hi, this is Pranav, and this is for Dada. Dada, you have uh, I have uh, read that you have said. Uh, you want, uh, it will be better for you to do a documentary film on you rather than uh, to write a bi biography. So what's your reflect on that? I never said that, so I don't need to give a reaction on that. I didn't say it. can have both. My uh, as she says, you can have both. Yeah. One is already there, the second one will hopefully be there soon. I think it's, it's available at the, at the book fair. Sorry? Stall. Which stall, Suresh? Why don't you, you Yeah. Uh, just a couple of questions finally, please. Yeah. One. My question to Shomila is that you work both with Uttam Uva and Shomik Prakatanji. It's a very common question, but whom you prefer the most as an actor, as an O actor? Whom you prefer the most? That's a very difficult question because I, I think both were wonderful. And uh, Uttam Kumar has also directed me. I've uh, worked in Palunkini Kankabuti, who was, uh, he was my director also, and I found him a wonderful director. And I've worked in very good films with him. But Shomitru was my first co-actor. Both of us began our film journey together. So he's my buddy, you know, he's a friend of mine. So obviously I'm more fond of him. <laughs> Thank you. We'll take one final question. Uh, yeah, somewhere at the back, the lady at the back, Uh, Sharmila ji, I'm a great fan of yours and I come from the other side of Bengal, I'm from Bangladesh and I was at your uh, reading with Shomitro last year. But I have a question for Shorab Ganguly. What's the future of women's cricket in South Asia and how much would you support? I mean, we have seen men's cricket for a long time. The women's cricketers are bringing gold medals, so is there going to be a com serious future for them. I saw a lot of men clapping for that also, so you better answer seriously. Hopefully, uh, hopefully because I, I used to meet Jhulun Goswami every morning at Eden Gardens. I used to keep running and she also used to keep running, although she ran about seven, eight laps less than I did. Uh, but uh, I think the BCCI is looking after women's cricket, so that's good news. And I think uh, lots of good things have happened with BCCI running the women's cricket. World Cup final, World Cup organized in India is 
is an example of that. So uh, you'll have to be a bit patient and be realistic that uh, it cannot be on the same platform as men's cricket. Uh, but uh, women's cricket uh, has improved and hopefully it keeps improving. Why not? And wouldn't you encourage your daughter to become a cricketer? Oh my God. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I think I would want her to do better things in life <laughs> rather than play cricket. There are lots of other things. Uh, she practices ODC dancing. She's a singer. I want her to study, uh, which I think are better things than playing cricket. But you never know. She might surprise him yet because children have a way of surprising their parents. So you never know. Your wish might come true. <laughs> and also later this year, later this year, there might be a possibility of a woman cricketer actually playing for Sussex second eleven alongside the men in England. So we'll we'll watch that. Thank you, thank you very much. Being a wonderful evening, you've been a wonderful audience. Thank you so much. Goodbye. I'd like to thank Saul Gangli and Shormila Tagore. And there are book signings at the back of this hall. So those who want to have their copy of Pataudi Nawab of Cricket signed with by Shormila Di can please buy the book at the bookstore behind and get it signed. So I'd really like to thank two icons. Our next session is about the icons of Bengal. So I'm so glad that we have this session before which really showcases two of our icons. Thank you. The next session is in five minutes.